Good afternoon, Denizen class. Today we are going to be covering world script containers. Now, world scripts are going to be one of the single most game changing and versatile scripts that you can possibly make, at least in my opinion. So, I'm going to keep this demonstration pretty short as always. If you haven't already, hop down into my Discord server. Link will be in the description below. Lots of good stuff going on in there. Um, I introduced a new channel. There's something on the bottom of my head. I see like a small... Sorry. I introduced something on the channel uh, for Dennis and Scripters to get help on. So if you are, you know, needing general questions, feel free to ask in there. Uh, the community of Scripters is still growing, so don't expect answers right away. However, we will get there, and I am excited for when we do. And without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about it. So, first off, what are world script containers? World scripts... They are pretty much things that, they're pr I don't know how to explain it other than they're things that happen in the game of Minecraft itself that can cause other things to happen. It's very vague, but let's go ahead and demonstrate. Now that we're in an open area, again, we are going to do, um, we're going to do some very simple things here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is set up our script, which... I always seem to not have ready. Okay. So we're going to call this world scripts.yml. Okay. So the first thing that we are going to want to do is type out our script name. We're going to call this uh, block breaker because that's exactly what we're going to be doing. And we need to press enter. We need to define the type as world. Okay, so now that we have that going, we're gonna put one more line. We're gonna call it events. So what we want to do is, let's say when we break cobblestone, because let's tear down some houses, why not? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna type out on player breaks cobblestone. And I'm gonna show you where I already know this from. So if you remember from the last tutorial, we're gonna open up a new, uh, a new whatever browser you use. We're gonna type in Denizen scripts. We're gonna go here to the script repo. And here we're gonna go into event search instead of command search. Instead of scrolling all the way through trying to find stuff, especially because it's not exactly alphabetical order, what we're going to do is press Control F or Command F if you're on a Mac, and it'll bring up a little search thing. So what we're going to type is on player, and we're using breaks, so we're going to type on player breaks. And here we can see um, we can see what we are wanting to use. So. As you can see, there's two different types of player, uh, player breaks, but this is going to be when an item uh, that they're holding breaks, like when you run out of durability, but that's not what this tutorial is about. We want it to be when a player breaks a block. So here you can see it has these two like open and close signs, I forget what they're called. We're just going to call them variable, uh... yeah, you know, we're just going to call this a variable. So. Uh, it says on player breaks variable, which has material in here. We replaced material with cobblestone. You can use on player breaks. Yeah, you can use on player breaks block to use every single block in Minecraft. However, that can get kind of hectic and cause this script to fire very, very frequently. So to at least minimize it a little bit, we're gonna switch it to cobblestone. Next, we're gonna type in narrate actually we're gonna put two spaces in front of this it's not necessary but one thing you notice if you use notepad plus plus like me is if you put two spaces after the event name you can minimize it this is very helpful if you have like an event that fires like 10 different things like i do so what we're gonna do is we're gonna type success so once we go once we do that we're gonna go back into game and type ex reload Okay, so we can see here, event block breaker uh, breaks cobblestones matched multiple things. That means it loaded successfully. If it didn't, we would get an error message right above it saying that something was wrong. So now that it's reloaded, 
let's go break a house. And as you can see, success. If I break grass, nothing happens. So this is perfect. Now one thing we can do is there are some blocks with really funky names and data tags. So um, for example, if we were to do let's let's use this right here. So we're gonna we're gonna go back into our thing here. And what we can do with world scripts, you can actually have multiple events inside the same script. So we're gonna copy paste that. But we're going to switch this back to block. The reason for this is because we want to figure out what the exact data of this uh, wheat is. And this can apply to other things too, such as stairs, um, stairs, slabs, doors, redstone stuff. It can apply to many different types of blocks. So uh, something important to keep in mind. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in narrate. And now we're going to go back to the website. Notice here in the context, they gave us several different uses on how to use it. So we can use context location, which will give us the coordinates the block was broken at. So we're going to go ahead and type that real quick. That location. We're going to save and reload. Okay. So let's, as you can see, it's giving me the coordinates where the block was broken. At. This can be very helpful if you're using other events, like um, if you were to say, if, yeah, if, you know, I actually will just do that in another tutorial. Good. <laughs> My mind isn't currently working. So basically that's what context location does is it gives us that exact coordinates and we need that L at tag in the future as well but that's something we will cover in a future tutorial. Next, we have context.material. So we're gonna duplicate this by pressing controller command D, and we're just gonna switch location to material. Okay, we're gonna reload. And as you can see, M equals oak log, and here's the fancy thing, direction equals Y. This means it's facing up and down. If I were to put it like this, Z. It's facing along the Z axis, axis, and if I put it this way, it's facing along the X axis. Generally, you won't get into that specific of stuff with blocks. However, it can be useful. Um, I guess another example will be if I put down a redstone torch, lit equals true, or if I break the lamp, lit equals true, lit equals false. So there's my proof that you can use it for um, multiple things, such as redstone logs and whatever else. Now, we're gonna get into a different thing. You saw down here that it said context XP. This is pretty much just useful for quartz, coal, diamond, and emerald, because those are the only blocks in the game that really drop experience. But one thing I want to do is I want to break the uh, wheat here. So as you can see, it says age equals seven. So say we wanted to do a thing where a uh, script would activate only when players break wheat at the age of seven. What we're going to type out is we're gonna type that exact thing right there. So on player breaks wheat, age equals seven, narrate success. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and disable this tag right here, or this block, as well as this one, because we're not using them currently. So right now, the only active part of the script we have is on player breaks wheat age 7. So let's go ahead and reload. Uh, it's not updating with water, that worries me, so we're going to, we're just going to grab a little, we're going to grab a hoe here real quick. Okay. So, now then, See, it says success, but we're going to plant some wheat seeds. If I break it, nothing. It's only checking for wheat that has the age of seven, which is fully grown. There's not a whole lot you can do with this. However, it can be helpful if you're using some type of like uh, story-based or adventure-based server, or if um, 
I don't know, say you only want players to get wheat seeds back if they break full-grown wheat rather than breaking it like this. Because in survival mode, they would get the seeds back. However, um, you know, if you want them to, like, not, you could do an event where if uh, they broke wheat seeds, you can use Determined to Cancel. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you that real quick, actually, since I brought it up. What we're going to do here is we're going to add this. We are going to set it back to wheat. Now, we see right here in chat, if you can see where my mouse is on the left, it says wheat age 7. So, what we're going to want to type out is if uh, block, or if context, oh my gosh, I cannot, okay, there we go, material contains wheat, and then another thing there, age equals 7, and then two of those, and one of these, we're going to press colon, we're going to type Q clear. This means whenever we break wheat that is fully grown, nothing's going to happen, the script's just going to end there. Now we're going to add a thing called else, and we're going to type in determine cancelled. So if we break wheat that isn't fully grown, it's just not going to break. So let me go ahead and reload here. As you can see, it's just replanting itself instantly. However, if we have fully grown wheat here, success. This can also be a really helpful thing. Uh, it can be a very unique server feature, say if you don't want players, like you want players to have to wait till their crops are fully grown to harvest them. You can do it that way. And with the wheat, you can do the same thing with carrots and beetroot as well. Uh, you can't quite do it with pumpkins because pumpkins and melons don't have an age. They just, you know, they're just pumpkins and melons. But any kind of crop like this, carrots, potatoes, beetroot, wheat, uh, you can do the same thing with all of them um, by determining their age by using context.material and then typing out either this or this. So ladies and gentlemen, that's my introduction to world event scripts. If this tutorial inspired you, make sure to give me a thumbs up, you know, like, subscribe for more future content as class will continue to go on throughout the summer and probably for several months to follow. Thank you guys so much for watching and we are going to make some pretty amazing things together. I will see you next time. Class dismissed.